Welcome to The Last Christian Radio Show with your hosts, Brother J.D. Williams and Brother T.L. Farley. It's now time to grab your Bible as prophecy brings into focus the events playing out on the world stage at incredible speed, right before our very eyes, and exactly as was foretold. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Last Christian Radio Show. We're glad you're here. My name is J.D. Williams, and as always, I am joined by uh, Mr. T.L. Farley. How are you doing out there in Dallas today, Terry? Uh, doing good, uh, Joel. Uh, it's not quite as hot inside as it is outside. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Well, Terry, we've got a lot to talk about today, and I do mean a lot to talk about today. If anything, we may run out of time. I don't know. Um, but, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of stuff going on that uh, I think people need to be aware of. And the first thing I'm going to start out with, and even before I do that, I, I want to make this really clear. I want to make this statement right now, because I know that there have been some that have made comments that, you know, oh, well, y'all are just two Republicans. No, no, that's not the case. At least not for me. Terry has to speak for himself, but here's me. This is me. This is me. I am not a Democrat. I am not a Republican. What I am is an independent Christian who votes only on Bible-based candidacies. That's it. I'll vote for a Democrat if they are Christian and they believe in the Bible and they actually perform like they believe in the Bible. I will vote for a Republican if they do the same, and I will vote for a zoologist if they're the best candidate Bible-based. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. I'm an independent, pure and simple. And as I said, Terry will have to speak for himself. Now, with that in mind, I want to play you this, which I call liberal hypocrisy. If you own all of Twitter or Facebook or what have you, you don't have to explain yourself. You don't even have to be transparent. You could secretly ban one party's candidate or all of its candidates, all of its nominees, or you could just secretly turn down the reach of their stuff and turn up the reach of something else. And the rest of us might not even find out about it till after the election. Wow. Now, uh, that, that's, a, that's a Democrat saying that because Elon Musk bought Twitter, that now all of a sudden, all of a sudden, for the very first time in all of history, you have somebody who can turn the dial one way or the other. I guess he forgot about the people that have been censored on Twitter since uh, Jack Dorsey stepped down on November 29th to 2021. Uh, now, this guy's name, I probably will mispronounce it, but he's in charge of Twitter now, Parag Aguar. Uh, he immediately began to purge Twitter of its remaining conservative user base. Now, among those, of course, we all know is President Donald Trump. That's no secret. There's also a group called Project Veritas that has been bumped off of Twitter. Um, I've got a list here, and I, I couldn't even begin to go through them, but a couple of names that you might recognize here. Mike Lindell, the CEO of my Twitter, of my pillow. Uh, there's something like 70,000 accounts that have been permanently suspended for engaged in sharing harmful Quanon-associated content. Um, let's see, there's been mathematicians, uh, White House strategists, uh, like I said, I'm just going through a list here, and it is extensive, but uh, mainly 90% or more belong to the Republican Party and are, well, 
they they don't follow the Twitter guidelines. What do you think of that, Terry? Well, it's unfortunate uh, that there are guidelines of that kind in America. Uh, we're supposed to have a, a place uh, in public communications where you're allowed to say what you think. Right. Um, you know, and certainly the Democrats say exactly what they think, uh, but they don't want anyone else to speak uh, right. that way. And I say that not just uh, as a Republican. I do, re I do vote Republican. Um, but I'm not against voting for an honest man who's a Christian, who's a good man. Um, but I can listen to people. There are uh, Republicans, uh, rhinos we call them, uh, that I wouldn't walk across the street to shake hands with. Right. Uh, I don't understand why they're even in the party. Um, <laughs> well, they're in the party. I, I can tell you exactly why they're in the party, because the uh, the, lo <laughs> the location where they are supports Republican candidates. And if they if they yes. listed if they listed themselves what as what they truly are, a, a Democrat in the disguise of a Republican, they couldn't win. So, of course, That's they, right. they choose yeah. to they choose to list themselves at the Republican Party and then immediately support all of the propositions of the Democrats. But I don't want to get too deep no. into that. I do not want to get into no. too, too deep into that. Now, here, this is something I'm, I'm going to run a couple of these back to back. OK, and then we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll discuss them both and I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll go from there. But just listen to this because it, it's pretty amazing. In what case would it be appropriate to perform irreversible sex change surgery on kids? Those decisions are made by that individual uh, in cons consultation with physician and caregivers, and no decision would be made without having consulted appropriately. Okay, now hang on just a second. That was by our HHS Secretary, Bacaro. He says that kids under the age of 18 should be able to make a decision as to a sex change operation that is permanent and cannot be reversed. That's one. Here's the next one. If they drive Title 42 to be abolished a week from today, they will have helped destroy the Biden presidency. I think it would be a self-inflicted injury of a monumental dimension and the reverberations might result in a rout in November and uh, more importantly in uh, 2024. I think that with inflation, with immigration, with crime, the Democrats are doomed except for one thing. This leak in the Supreme Court of the abortion decision has changed the political calculus in this country. Yeah, it has changed the political calculus. I told you, I told you in, in a radio show not too long ago that they, they were going to use this as their primary campaign issue. And I think that they have uh, followed through on that. Now, before we go on, and believe me, this is the last political thing. OK, it really yeah. is the last political thing. Uh, I'm going to do a new show, Terry, on Revelation Radio. That's RevelationRadio.net for those of you keeping up with that. I'm going to start a new show, and I'm just going to play you the intro, okay, to let yeah. you know that Christians can have fun too, okay? Christians mm -hmm. can have fun. There, there's nothing in the Bible that says Christians can't have fun. And th this new show uh, is, well, it, it's based on fun, okay? It's based on fun because America's gotten way too serious, and it's, you know, it's, 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 it's depressing. It's depressing. Here we go. Mm -hmm. I think I probably have a much higher IQ than you do, I suspect. I got to the Senate 180 years ago. I got to the Senate 180 years ago. I got to the Senate 180 years ago. I've been on the ground in Georgia, Iraq, Pakistan, Afghanistan. And I can tell you in no uncertain terms, this administration's policy has been an abysmal failure. Oh, Joe, say it ain't so. <laughs> <laughs> 
Now, uh, again, you know, what really what, what that uh, new show is, you know, it, it's all about East Texas. And it just says, no, this isn't our America. Our America is, hey, there's a really long line at A.J. Snow, no cone stand, or we got, uh, we, we got something going on here in town that, that you folks need to know about. It's just a lot of fun and games is all it is. And I, I throw that in there to kind of give us a break. Give us a break from from all of the the stuff that just irritates us to death. But we do have to, some serious things that that we do have to get into. And first of all, do you think that 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 abortion thing? Do, do you think that could turn the election, Terry? Do, do you think that could turn the the twenty twenty two election? Um, I certainly think it could have an influence. Um, however. I'm far more concerned with what is going to take place behind the scenes. Um, we have a fairly good report of what took place in 2020 um, in reality, uh, but it didn't matter. And, yep. and that's, that's where I'm concerned. Uh, they don't hardly ever talk about the uh, influence of the, the voting uh, crowd uh, coming in online from across the world, uh, which has been reported on, um, you know, so, you know, I, you know, I, my view, my full complete view, though, is really focused on the rapture <laughs> yeah. and on, uh, on the word yeah. of God. Yeah, well, let, let, let's get to, yeah, in that season, let, let's get to that. Were, let's get to that right now, because, uh, you know, we, we, talk, we mentioned it um, in the last show that Finland uh, was talking about joining NATO. And so uh, I think this begins to tie into Scripture. So Sweden is now doing the same thing. Listen. The government has decided to inform NATO that Sweden wishes to become a member of the alliance. There is not an immediate threat to Russia with the inclusion of those countries, but the expansion of military infrastructure over the territory will obviously call for our response. Okay, now that was, first of all, Sweden making the announcement, and then secondly, the Russians coming in to say, hey, you know, we don't really think that's a big deal, but we're going to have to, re we are going to have to respond. Now, why does this tie in? Terry, why does this tie in? I believe uh, that we, we can begin in Isaiah 17. The burden against Damascus. Behold, Damascus will cease from being a city and will be a ruinous heap. The cities of Arar are forsaken. They will be for flocks which lie down and no one will make them afraid. The fortress also will cease from Ephraim. The kingdom from Damascus and the remnant of Syria, they will be as the glory of the children of Israel, says the Lord of hosts. Now, to me, let me tell you this. They're, they're talking about maybe a third of the Russian army has been destroyed. I don't buy it. And I don't buy it because Scripture says that Damascus is going to become a ruinous heap. Okay? Now... What are your thoughts, Terry? What, do you think that Russia is going to back up and go to Russia and that we're going to be waiting for a long period of time? Or do you see Russia continuing to move, um, as was expressed in Ezekiel 38? Yeah, um, I believe the tip-off for us is uh, the passage that tells us that God is going to put a hook in the jaws uh, of Russia and and move them forward uh, they're not going to be inspired to do this uh they're not going to be taking political action on their own or whatever a uh, god is actually going to do this they could be going as an example politically or any other way they could be going one direction but it doesn't matter because at some point god is going to cause them to go to Israel and, right. uh, you know, with hooks in the jaw, we can't get more graphic in our understanding of someone being controlled. Remember when you were a kid and your mother would get mad and she'd grab you by the face and, and hold your <laughs> jaws, you know? I mean, hooks in the jaw. We, we right. understand this language. Right. Absolutely. Well, you know, and that brings me to the next topic. 
which is it, it's about time. We're, we're coming down to it now, okay? Uh, the United States is going to have to start to make a decision of what they want to do with Israel. Are we on their side or are we not? Let's listen to this. There's tension among Democrats over supporting Israel or the Palestinians. Increasingly progressives and members of the squad are backing the Palestinians. They want to hold the U.S. accountable. We cannot remain silent when our government sends 3.8 billion of military aid to Israel that is used to demolish Palestinian homes. Top Democrats like Steny Hoyer and Chuck Schumer are among the biggest backers of Israel in Congress. Some Democrats believe the U.S. must help Israel battle Hamas. Throughout history, the Jew has never been safe. Now is the time to stand with Israel. The White House is trying not to take sides inside the party. We support their ability to have different points of view, but we are approaching it through the prism of how we feel uh, we can come to a most effective outcome. What was that? What did she say? <laughs> what did she yeah, say? That's double talk. I mean, that. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I get, you know, may, maybe the wind is blowing from the north, so we have that answer today. Then the, no, the wind changed. It went from the south, so we have to change direction again. Look. These people have got to tell us what's really going on. But how does it tie to Scripture? Okay, it ties to Scripture. Let's look at this, for instance. Let, let's look. For you were formed in my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's room. I praise you for and I'm fear, fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me when as yet there was none of them now that's just to tell you the importance of human life okay that just tells you the importance of human life but now i want to go back to the book of genesis let's look at this because this is why israel is important listen to this stuff okay this is genesis 12 2 and 3 okay and i will make of you a great nation and i will bless you and i will make your name great so that you will be a blessing i will bless those who bless you and him who dishonors you i will curse and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed in other words don't go against israel right okay mm -hmm. Eze ezekiel 3725, they shall dwell in the land that I gave to my servant Jacob, where your fathers lived. They and their children and their children's children shall dwell there forever. And David, my servant, shall be their prince forever. I don't see God changing that and saying, oh, well, no, I made a mistake. I'm going to back up on that. But let's keep going, okay? Let's go to Genesis chapter 22, verses 16 through 18, and said... By myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies and in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. In other words, yet again, God is making it very, very clear that he's on Israel's side and to be against Israel. That's a bad choice, Terry. That's a really bad choice. What do you think? Yeah, the Bible says that uh, Israel is uh, the apple of God's eyes. Right. Uh, it says that you know, God says, tells them in Genesis, he says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And he right. said, I did not choose you. He said, I did not choose you because you were the greatest. He said, <laughs> you were the least. He said, but I chose you because I love you. Right. Is that not phenomenal? Right. That's the reason God chose Israel, because he loves them. Right. They didn't have anything special to attract uh, them to him. Uh, they were the least of all the peoples. And yet, God chose them because he loved them. Right. And, 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 and that's, you know, why he's gonna protect them. that's why he's going to save them. You, you could, I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring this in context 
of the United States of America, just for a second, just as, just sort of like a comparison thing, okay? <laughs> we got 50 states in the United States. The loudmouths, and I'll include Texas in the group, California, New York, Florida, okay? They get a lot of, they get a lot of press, right? You know, and, and what, they, what they talk about gets a lot of national attention. When is the last time that, that you saw somebody pay a lot of attention to the state of Rhode Island? <laughs> Do you know, when you were talking, <laughs> I started thinking, where's he going? And I thought he's going to Rhode Island. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because, you know, I mean, that's really the comparison. Because when you look at the world, when, when, when you look at the world, Israel is a dot. I yeah. mean, it, it's one of the smallest countries on earth, and yet it is talked about more than any other. That would be like us focusing the entire interest of the United States of America on the state of Rhode Island. It makes no sense to do that. There's a reason. There is a reason why we talk about Israel. And the reason we talk about it is because Satan hates Israel. That's why we talk about it, because Satan has gone after the Jewish nation because those are the chosen people of God. That's the only reason that the world remains focused on Israel. That's my opinion. What do you think, there? I think I've lost him. <laughs> this happens occasionally when you're doing a live show. So... Anyway, Terry has been knocked offline, so what I'm going to do now is let you know a little bit about Terry and what he brings to this show when he's with us, and that is his Eye of the Storm segment. Now, he has that on RevelationRadio.net uh, every Sunday at uh, 7.30, but Terry has spent an a tremendous amount of time writing about the rapture itself. Not what happens before the rapture of the church, but what occurs at the exact moment of the rapture of the church. There has been, to my knowledge, not a single other book ever written strictly about the moment of the rapture. So I would highly suggest and encourage everyone to go out and grab a copy. It's called Blast Off Repeal More. It's in its fifth edition. And Terry details a, a great deal of that on, on his personal radio show. But in his book, which I was privileged enough to get a copy of, he really goes into a lot of detail. There's something like 1,350 different scriptures and more than 25 different Bible versions were used to back up each and everything that he did. So I would highly recommend you do that. Now then, also this week, this Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m., uh, I will be releasing the latest episode of The Last Christian Podcast. You can find that at lastchristian.net or on any of the major podcasting platforms. And I always try to bring things into a, into a biblical perspective. And I think that you're going to find this week to be very, very interesting. I'm not even going to tip you off as to what it's about, but it is going to be something that social media is not going to be thrilled about. Anyway, this show is always about locating that last individual to accept Jesus Christ as Savior because just like there is a last play in any football game or any game of any kind, there is also that last individual to accept Jesus Christ as Savior before the moment of the rapture. Of course, people will be saved after it, but those people, those people will come after the rapture of the church. And that's a position that you don't want to be in because of the fact that you then have to go through those seven years of tribulation, or at least a part of them. It is going to be extremely difficult to call yourself a Christian. And there's no reason to do it. Instead, all you need to do is simply ask God for the forgiveness of your sins. Tell him you know you were a sinner, but that you know that Jesus Christ died for you. 
that he laid in the tomb for three days and then he rose again. He was seen by hundreds of people and then ascended to heaven to be with the Father. And he also told us he's coming back for his church. That's that rapture we were talking about. Followed by seven horrendous years that you certainly do not want to be a part of and that you don't have to be. Simply pray to him and ask for your forgiveness and for his acceptance of you as a Christian. All you need to do is pray a simple prayer in your own words and simply ask in Jesus' name that you will be saved and you will find that peace that surpasses all understanding. I can assure you making the decision before the rapture is much preferred than making it after the rapture. We look forward to seeing you again this Thursday night at 7.30 p.m. right here. And we'll have Terry back, I hope. I don't think I've lost him forever in freeze frame there. But until then, please, please, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ yet, make that your number one priority. Nothing else really matters. And until Thursday night, everyone, thank you for joining us again for another edition of The Last Christian Radio Show. For Terry Farley, I'm J.D. Williams, and I wish you a wonderful night, and may God bless you, each and every one. Good night. Thanks again for joining us today for The Last Christian Radio Show, and be sure to tune in every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday from 7.30 to 8 p.m. Central Time right here on Revelation Radio. And don't forget to join us every Wednesday evening at 7.30 p.m. Central for The Last Christian Podcast, now available on all major podcast platforms and at www.lastchristian.net. Until the trumpet sounds.